Mill of the Stone Woman is one of the first colour horror movies from Italy. It's a movie that is really kind of lavish on its production style, harkening back to the movies of Hammer. It felt like that, but it was mixed with a lot of Hitchcockian elements. And as much as it is a horror, I would say it definitely moved more into the thriller kind of ground for me. Not a great deal of scares, but a good deal of atmosphere and twists and turns along the way. I really kind of liked a lot about this movie and it kind of took me a little bit by surprise sitting down to watch it. We follow the character of Hans who's been sent to uh, this mill that's a, a kind of attraction uh, of sorts. It has these stone women that, that displays murderesses from around uh, the globe in a kind of uh, wacky display that moves that you kind of need to see in the movie to see how it kind of works. But he's went there to kind of write a report on the history of the place and he meets Professor Wall there who has a couple of bits of information and uh, for him to do, has an area for him to work and has some strict rules. He has to be off uh, the property by 7 a.m. because 7 p.m. because that's the last boat that he can get to leave this little island. He can't really freely roam about too much and he must never, ever talk to his daughter Elfie who has a mysterious illness of sorts. Now we get some other characters in this that are really fun other than Professor Wall and the daughter Elfie. We get a doctor um, who is on the grounds there constantly looking after Elfie. We get Rab, his kind of best friend, and we get a love interest for our hero as well, Hans. And it's pretty much all the characters within the movie, but early on we see that Elfie is a very strong-willed young woman. Doesn't look as if there's anything wrong. She's coming to Hans and seducing him early on in the movie. And then things take a, a turn when at one point something happens to Elfie that he can't explain and it leads into these wonderful sequences of hallucinations, of terror, of him seeing visions or people talking to him or walking around, things that couldn't possibly be there or happening, things that he can't tell anybody because at the time that this is set he would seem as if he's gone mad. And that's where it kind of leads into the more Hitchcockian elements that it has here. These twists and turns that aren't really given enough time to breathe and take hold because they're, they're either debunked or explained at certain points. You feel as if that should be stretched out a little bit more. But I like the way that the, the story kept changing. You know, you have this young man there to do a report. He kind of finds somebody. He, he does something he's not super proud of and then he decides that he loves somebody else uh, and then there's death and murder and haunting dreams and reoccurring uh, pieces of evidence that keep appearing within his grasp. It all kind of twists and turns and, and changes the elements of the story and of course it, it doesn't become too surprising what's going on. You've got um, <laughs> what, 61 uh, years since this movie's come out so you've seen um, lots of iterations of what really going on here in other movies and that kind of takes a little bit of the power away from this one but Mull of the, the Stone Woman was really kind of energetic I, I, I did love the fact that it was constantly moving forward and constantly dropping bits of information that was needed the breadcrumbs to kind of solve what was going on I, I was truly surprised with some elements of the storyline as well as to how things uh, were being rectified. Um, the mysterious illness that Elfie has, uh, how that even comes about is, is never really explained but the procedure of fixing it for a period of time is most definitely explained and it was a true surprise to see as well. It has these haunting statues that are constantly hanging around the sets uh, which are, are women in dismay or distress uh, about to, to pay for th their crimes that they've taken. Um, I loved the colours within this one. It has that kind of technicolour feel to it. Uh, later on there's a, a moment where one of the guys is wearing a green coat and hat uh, and he's got red hair and it just kind of, the whole image kind of pops out. 
Uh, the production values are really great on this one. I love the sets. Uh, I, I love the kind of look of it. Whether it be in the tavern, as there's a song and dance number going on, which is really energetic and fun as well. Uh, and just f for a brisk 90 minutes movie, it does cram a lot into it. I don't know if it's going to have a great deal of rewatch value, but I did like Mill of the Stone Woman a lot on a first watch. I'd be interested to see how it played on a second watch, which I may give it pretty soon. Uh, this one's coming out from Arrow. Uh, I got it on iTunes uh, because I, I wanted to see it before I decided whether or not I was going to buy it. And I would say definitely worth one checking out if you like Italian movies, you like Hammer movies particularly. It melds both of these uh, really well and creates something really interesting. I'd love to know your thoughts in this film if you've seen it and of course as always if you think I deserve a like hit the like button. There's more content up here that you can see of mine's if you want to uh, subscribe if you haven't done so share this video and if you're feeling extra supportive in the festive season you can join my Patreon or the membership program which would be amazing. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on Man V Film.